Assalamualaikum, my name is Muhammad Syed Yulam bin Muhammad Sabri Saudi Arabia is Muslim rich legacy and its religion is very important to its culture Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia implement Islamic law in its nation rule and the most population in Saudi Arabia is Wahhabi the religion impacts people to value how they develop relation between themselves and their families also in business and communities there is 34.8 million population in Saudi Arabia which is 60, 69 69% is Saudi citizen and 31% is non-Saudi resident Saudi Arabia industry are food oil oil production petroleum refining basic petrochemical cement construction fertilizer and plastic Saudi export commodity is based on the petroleum products and the export partner for Saudi Arabia as reported in 2019 is China India Japan South Korea United States and import partner for Saudi Arabia is China United Arab Emirates United States Germany and the import commodity that Saudi Arabia takes is machinery equip machinery and equipment food stuff chemicals motor vehicles and textiles Saudi Arabia GDP in 2020 was 701.74 billion US dollar Saudi Arabia's GDP climbed from 184.14 billion US dollar in 2001 to 701.74 billion US dollar in 2020 rising at an annual rate at 8.11% on average and Saudi Arabia employment rate was at level 5.6% in 2019 down from 6% in previous years based on the world data at last the challenge doing business in Saudi Arabia are lack of culture awareness different work weeks and need to different branding when you want to enter the uh, Saudi Arabia market even though there is a challenge doing business in Saudi Arabia but it is a good opportunity for setting up business because an an entrepreneur can now establish a business for only 5.4% 5. 5. of his or her income per capita which is lower than the regional average of 16.7% for the Middle East and North Africa Saudi Arabia current ranks third in the world of this metric outperforming New Zealand and Singapore and the world to easiest the world easiest place to do business based on the World Bank Group in 2020. So I will continue our group presentation with the cultural dimension analysis. Based on Hobbes tips, there are six steps of culture dimension. First one is power distance. Next is um, collectivism versus individualism. Then masculinity versus femininity. And then uncertainty avoids it, it avoidance and then short-term orientation versus long-term orientation and the last one is indulgence restraints for saudi arabia uh, they are highly in power distance highly in collectivism masculinity high in uncertainty avoidance short-term orientation and indulgence So I will continue with the explanation in cultural dimension analysis. First, power distance index. The people in Saudi Arabia have been positioned in hierarchy without any justification or explanation and subordinates expect to be told what to do. Next, they are accept highly in uh, PDI is a part of their cultural heritage. Next is uh, collectivism. They are very careful for not doing something that shameful because it will affect their family. And family and clan are the main source of individual's identity. In masculinity, men are dominant in the society. 
they driven by success and achievement as it defines who is the best or who is the winner in that field. In uncertainty avoidance, they are uh, in Saudi Arabia, they are having a very strict rules and belief to deal with the unknown situation. The society also not really into the new uh, change or new environment because it's too risky for them. The next one is uh, short-term orientation. Saudi Arabia's people more focus on the past and their present. They are not really um, think about the future. And they are very have highly respect to their tradition. For indulgence, they are not have a very significant study for uh, Saudi Arabia, but basically indulgence and restraints um, the meaning of for indulgence, which society think of pleasure is important as it is a basic natural human desire, while restraint means that the culture has a very uh, strict social norm. Hi, my name is Adi Bin Ahmed, metric number 275580. So next, I'm going to talk about the point where the, the things that we should do and also should not do in Saudi Arabia. So, the first do things that we should do in Saudi Arabia is dress modestly because we know as a Muslim country, Saudi Arabia is very emphasized on the dressing uh, respectfully, either for male or female. So, this thing especially for female because they need to wear clothes with uh, what we call modest length and should not going above the knee. Uh, basically, for male, uh, for male and female, they should not wearing what we call short. So here, you can see the example of the dress code that we can use in order for us to traveling to Saudi Arabia or conducting business there. So the next one is build relationship before discussing about something that serious. For example, Saudi Arabia people love to know each other before they continue with something serious. So, at the first place, you need to spend some time building a relationship between your partner, Saudi's partner, and then next you can proceed with the business or with the something that serious that you want to discuss. So, as a result from this, you can attract the interest of the Saudi Arabia people or maybe your partner uh, to conduct something with you or doing the business with you. So, the next one is deliver criticism in a polite and also indirect manner way. Especially when we want to what we call uh, correct someone uh, of or giving our point about something. So we should do it in an indirect manner and also at the same time we need to uh, complementing the good side of their point. So next, we are going to talk about the don'ts that we should not do in Saudi Arabia. So the first one is avoid a Saudi to share their opinion on Saudi politics or about the royal family leadership. So this is because Saudi generally do not feel comfortable when they discussing or when uh, we discussing about uh, the royal family or they explaining about this topic. This is because they are very loyal community. So the next one is do not criticize the Islamic religion or Saudi culture practice. For example, uh, we talk to our what we call partner, Saudi partner to uh, for them to go out from their culture or religion observance to be more modernized so it will be inappropriate for us to do so and also can be highly offensive so the best for us is to avoid talking about their religion altogether and the last one is no public display affections okay for example, if you, husband and wife, go to Saudi Arabia, you cannot holding hands romantically or show any sign of romance. 
if you want to do all that so you need to do it in private so that is the culture of Saudi Arabia so you cannot do that and another what we call additional information about this is you cannot do not you should not insist a Saudi to bring his wife to a social gathering this is because when there's a social gathering they will divide it into two separate parts which is for female and male so we cannot easily combine those uh, social gathering between the male and female so that's all from me so i will pass to the another presentation assalamualaikum uh, very good morning to everyone my name is muhammad kariludin bin muhammad kamaludin my metric number is 275659 so today i will continue my part which is communication and negotiation so uh, like every country saudi arabia also have their own culture, their own way, their own beliefs in how to communicate and how to uh, negotiate with them during business. So, uh, as we all know, communication and negotiating is one of the most crucial and important uh, process in doing business. So, uh, it is important to understand the countries that we are going to do business with, uh, understand their way of negotiating, understand their way of uh, communicating, so that we can get a favorable outcome for both parties. So coming to my first point, how do uh, we communicate and negotiate uh, with Saudi Arabian people? So first of all, Saudi Arabian people uh, likes to talk with high volume. So for example, when you are communicating with them, sometimes they tend to raise up their volume uh, like shouting, but actually they are not shouting. Uh, this may some people consider it like a negative attitude but actually it is a positive attitude it shows that someone is being sincere and listening and uh, giving their all in the negotiation uh, moreover uh, some might think that uh, they are angry but actually they are not angry they just talk loudly and uh, but it is different for women in Saudi Arabia Women in Saudi Arabia, they tend to be more quieter and uh, does not give uh, too much opinion. Coming to my next point, which is uh, eye contact. So in Saudi Arabia, eye contact is very important. But it depends on certain situation. For example, when you are talking to a guy or a person who is older than you or maybe your business client, you are talking to uh, someone who is the same gender as you, you have to look them in the eye when they are talking because lack of eye contact uh, means rude it means that uh, you are not listening to them you are not uh, listening to what they are saying you are just standing there without giving respect to the person who is talking so eye contact is very important however uh, it is different when in the situation with a woman uh, giving or having a very long period of high eye contact with a woman in Saudi Arabia is considered rude and it considered not respecting them so men uh, in Saudi Arabia tend to lower their their face uh, their gaze uh, when they uh, when they walking or uh, when they want to walk through a woman because they want to avoid eye contact with a woman so moreover uh, when communicating and uh, negotiating with uh, Saudi Arabian people do not publicly uh, disagree with them because uh, this will make them feel ashamed so Saudi Arabian people do not like to be uh, do, not, do not like to feel wrong or be uh, said wrong in front of uh, in the public places uh, so it is important to listen to what their opinion is until the very end and then privately you can privately uh, critique them uh, personally critique them or say to them uh, that you do not agree with them but just do not uh, disagree with them publicly because they will be f they will feel ashamed next um, when doing or when negotiating and communicating with uh, Saudi Arabia it is important to know that Saudi Arabian people are more likely to use indirect communication uh, they are concerned in saving people's face and they are more likely to be polite to people so, for example, when you are talking to uh, Saudi Arabian people and you offended them, but you will not know you offended them because they will not show their anger towards you. They will not say, hey, you offended me. 
they will just be silent you can see their uh, their body language you can see from their body language their eye contact that they they feel offended that they are angry so they will not directly say that uh, say to you that uh, they feel offended they use indirect communication last but not least uh, Saudi Arabian people like to stand close when they are uh, communicating and uh, talking uh, other than that they also like to uh, touch you when talking people with same gender they like to shake hands they like to uh, touch your shoulder because they feel uh, with uh, touching they can establish relationship with the person they are talking to so I think it is important to understand Saudi Arabian people's culture uh, when we want to negotiate and uh, communicate with them in order to get favorable outcome for both parties. I think that's all for me today. Thank you. Hello, my name is Muhammad Faris bin Muhammad Azmi. My number matrix is 275715. Now I'll be presenting about the recommendation and the conclusion um, of the country Saudi Arabia. So we found out that the Saudi leaders have uh, key skill sets that can be applied to addressing their challenges. Um, the data that has been collected demonstrate that Saudi Arabia's are perceived of it being effective at influencing higher management, uh, having a broad organizational perspective, possessing learning agility, uh, communicating and acting systematically. However, insufficient evidence of sustain of high any high performance of this uh, perceived um, uh, development in the leadership may result um, of the leader being removed from the organizations. Next, we have the organization change implementation that can be made in Saudi Arabia. As we can see that the four dimensions um, of Saudi Arabia focus on, focuses on power, um, distance, individualism, masculinity, masculinity and uncertainty avoidance. So. Um, the Arab culture also found that to influence the change process as the drivers of the strategic change attempted to turn uh, the universities in Saudi Arabia into modern institutions with some values drawn from Western cultures so that they can be um, competing with, uh, with other Western countries uh, other Western countries, sorry and the last one is the various barriers to effective implementation of strategic change such as adherence to the status quo by some groups within Saudi, Saudi society. So at the antagonism of some actors towards standard human resource process and signs of the inflexibility of management and leadership needed to be uh, in order for the organization um, change implement, implements in the country. So that's all for me and thank you.